Yo, yo, so this video is for anyone that ever walked into a Best Buy or an Apple and went, let me call my computer guy. Let me call my daughter, she's tech savvy. Let me see what he thinks. And if you're that nephew, daughter, son, tech guy in the family, next time someone asks you for what specs they need, just send them this video. This video will cover what specs you're gonna to wanna to look for in a computer if you're planning on doing your own video editing. And before I get into it again, I just ask that you like, share, subscribe, comment. Please engage, please ask questions. No questions too big, too small. I promise I'll get to you if I can. If you've been a bit lost about what to look for in a computer when you go shop for one, break out your notes app, take your pen out, this video right here will teach you just what you need. The main specs you'll look for is first your CPU, which is your processor, is basically your computer's brain. Next is your GPU, which is your video card, your graphics card. Next is your RAM, which is commonly labeled on the spec sheet you'll see next to a computer as memory. So that's not to be confused with storage. Storage is the capacity of data that your computer can hold. Now on this particular video, I'll just be listing what specs you need without much explanation on what those specs do. But if you are curious and wanna know more about why you need these minimum specs in your computer, I'll be posting somewhat of a bonus video later on midweek where I'll explain these different computer components and the best analogy that I can think of to share with you guys or that I can think of for you guys to retain it well. So first is your CPU and there's two brands you'll usually see on the spec sheet and that's Intel and AMD. And that spec sheet will read something like i3, i5, Intel Core i7, Intel i9. Then you'll probably see it followed up by how many cores are in that processor. With Intel, i5 is your minimum. i5 is your minimum. And if the spec sheet says it's anywhere besides Intel Core or Intel Xeon, don't even consider it. Because there's also Intel Pentium and Intel Celeron, and those processors are more for your email and spreadsheet types. Anything below i5 is your more basic use computer. Now, the other brand you'll typically see of CPUs is AMD, which is Advanced Micro Devices. And for you to consider an AMD device, you'll want to make sure that the spec sheet says AMD Ryzen. That's R-Y-Z-E-N. AMD Ryzen. The other spec about your CPU you'll want to look for is your cores. Four cores is the minimum you want to go on your laptop if you're considering doing any video editing or graphic work. Cores are a component that kind of splits up the tasks that your computers are performing. It's like you have a huge Lego set and you invited three more of your friends over to build it. Each of you split up the task and build it faster. The more cores your computer has, the faster it can perform. Next is GPU. AMD Radeon or NVIDIA GeForce are gonna be what you'll wanna spot on the spec sheet. And that's kind of all I have for GPU for now. RAM is a big deal. RAM temporarily stores the information that you're actively using to allow it to be accessed quickly. So the more programs you have running and the more tasks you have going, the more RAM you're gonna want. Too little RAM results in you having to close down all of your programs just to make the most demanding program run more smooth, namely your video editing software. Here, eight gigs of RAM is your absolute minimum, and 16 is actually ideal. And if you can spring for 32, go for 32. The spec sheet and the store out the box, you're gonna see four, eight, 16, and 32 gigs of RAM available without having to customize your computer. The more of this you have, the more information your computer will be able to process at one time, resulting in a faster computer. And the last big one on the spec sheet is your hard drive. You're going to see two different hard drives typically walking around the store. You're going to see HDD and SSD. HDD stands for hard drive disk. SSD stands for solid state drive. The difference between those is your hard disk drive or your HDD has a spinning disk and moving parts inside of it, whereas your SDD doesn't have any moving mechanical parts, resulting in your SSD, and sorry, I totally said SDD, I meant SSD, being a more solid, dependable, and faster hard drive. The lack of moving parts in an SSD makes it a lot less of a risk for crashing or breaking on you. Now, if you do spring for a hard disk drive, just be a lot more careful about impact with your laptop. It shouldn't really be an issue with desktops, but again, your SSD is going to give you faster performance if you can spring for it. And as far as storage goes, I recommend a minimum of 256 gigs. Now, I will say full disclosure, I have a 128 gig MacBook Pro. 
along with the touch bar, but that's kind of what I could afford at the time. But what I do, which is the same thing I do with my desktop, is I don't work off of the laptop or desktop at all. I have an external hard drive, which I recommend you buy as well. Really, I recommend you buy two in case one hard drive does happen to crash or something catastrophic happens to it. Anyway, I don't keep any information really on my desktop or my laptop because when your computer starts running low on space, it does also get sluggish. So you want to keep it as clear as you can. The only things on my desktop or laptop are just small files that I've been too lazy to drag onto my external hard drives. But yeah, I work solely from the external hard drive and the two brands I highly recommend are G Technology or Lacie. And I suggest you buy them by the terabyte or TB is what you would see on the box. A terabyte is a thousand gigs. So that's a lot of storage, which you'll need for your bigger size video files as you shoot or edit. My desktop computer has three G drives hooked up to it, totaling in 10 terabytes. One of those hard drives are a backup and two I work on, but I have no reason to bother the three terabytes that my desktop holds. And then my laptop, while it does have that 128 gig SSD, Inside that laptop bag at all times, I have a two terabyte LaCie drive. It's a portable drive. Wait, I'll show it to you. So this is my portable LaCie drive I carry around. It's two terabytes. You'll likely want to find one that has the round USB-C or um, your Thunderbolt port. And this here is the box of one of my G drives. So this is how the packaging will look. I highly recommend these external hard drives for your desktop or if your laptop stationary, I recommend it. Uh, G Drive does also make portable drives. I happen to get a deal on this one, so that's why I have the C, but I still do highly recommend the C. They're, they're both very durable and trustworthy hard drives. And once again, these bigger hard drives, they actually plug into the wall, whereas the portable ones can plug right into your computer and be powered. That's why I mentioned if your laptop stationary for your desktop, so you take a little more power to run. And again, on the back, you'll see a USB-C slot. That's your updated USB. But if you have an older computer, this does have an extra cable in it. There will be a cable available inside for you to hook it up to your USB 3.0 slot, which is your rectangle USB. Last tip, if you buy a laptop, go 15 inch or bigger. Typically below 15 inch is gonna be a 13 inch. And if you buy a 13 inch laptop, you're gonna be crying for more display real estate. The 15 inch display on my laptop suffices just fine. I've punched out entire projects on that 15 inch screen. And with having all the mentioned specs, which I'll recap here in a sec, those minimum specs will suffice just fine for editing video. Like I said before, if you're planning on going to more advanced route, motion graphics, 4K footage, and just a side note, if you're shooting in 1080, it's just fine. There's no real reason to shoot in 4K. If you do shoot in 4K, it will bog down a computer with the minimum specs I mentioned. So if you're going minimum specs, try to stick with 1080. If you have a computer with the specs that can maintain performance while editing videos, that machine will more than suffice for any other productive tasks that you perform on your day to day. So here's that rundown via list. So CPU, you're looking for Intel Pentium i5 minimum, go for seven if you can, or you're looking for the AMD Ryzen. GPU, which is your video card or graphics card, here you're looking for AMD Radeon or Nvidia GeForce. RAM or memory, you're gonna go eight gig minimum. 16 is ideal, get 32 if you can afford it. With storage, try to keep it minimum 256. Even if you are buying an XD, you'll let some files trickle onto your desktop. And if you're in that safe 256 gig window, you're not gonna have to worry too much about a message popping up says storage almost full. And when that message starts popping up, you will notice a lot of lag in your computer. So to keep from bogging down your computer, try to stick with 256 minimum in case you do need to put some files on your computer's local storage. But try to keep your videos off them. Video footage will absolutely kill less than a terabyte of local storage. So again, buy by the terabyte, get you at least a one terabyte external hard drive if you just wanna get one and kinda of start off. One terabyte probably will suffice for you. And that's all I have. Once again, like, subscribe, share, and look for my lesson on what these components actually do, why they're each individually important. Until next time.